environment variables, the passwords of development. We've all had to deal with environment variables, be it things that we're passing in at runtime, files that are named in all sorts of different ways, and the many different packages to try and get those dot files to actually appear in our projects the way they're supposed to. I'm sure I'm not the only one here who has had a lot of problems getting environment variables to work correctly across many different projects. Even just now, I just came back from a quick stream break and my CTO was asking questions about the different environment variable behaviors between Veet, Next, and vanilla Next.js and React applications. It's, it's not consistent. We rely on everything from weird prefixes to build steps to five different packages with different expectations around how these files and folders are named. We just kind of hope it works and it doesn't. But how do we get here? We got here because Node didn't support environment variables built in. You could pass a flag when you ran the Node command, but you couldn't read them from a file. And if you wanted to pass around a configuration with things like your database credentials to different members of your team, good luck. Thankfully, we have packages that do this well. Most of the frameworks that we use have their own built-in environment variable stuff. But what if we didn't need any of that? What if Node just supported .env files? Well, as of Node version 20.6, it finally does. After almost a decade of having to load the environment files in weird ways, we finally have built-in environment support. It comes with some cool features too. So let's take a look. Shout out to Westboss for the tweet that let me know this is finally dropped. It did numbers. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. He also shows off the really cool feature here, which we'll get to in a second. But now when you call your node command to run something, you can pass it dash dash env file, which is an environment file, and it will read things from that. It doesn't just read things like password that you'd want to pass as values into your application. It also can read node options. So you can tag all sorts of different things within your project, things like debug values, things like in that example, the inspect option for getting more verbose logging and digging into your node stuff like being able to control how node behaves by passing different environment files means we can do some really cool stuff with our project configurations going forward. Once again, I've been corrected by chat. So if you want to bully me, make sure you watch my live streams. As we see here, node options can be set. So I tried to recursively set env file equals dot env dot dev. So we're going to run this again here. I'm trying to manually configure node options, doing something a little silly here. I'm going to recursively call the env file argument through this dot env call. Let's run that real quick. Huh? Oh, once again, someone watching isn't subscribed. You all know subscriptions are free, right? They help the channel out a ton. It's a little red button under the video. If you haven't already clicked it, give that a click for all this awesome help that I'm putting way too much time into making. Anyways, and now we have the error that I probably should have gotten way before. <laughs> env file is not allowed in node options, which is sad. This is probably the only argument they don't let us pass here. We can do other things like inspect, but now we get the node debugger coming through as well, which is really handy to be able to do through your environment. I know that like in a lot of projects I work in, I don't fully trust the thing that I'm running it through, like the next runner. Like, like how would I run inspect on a next project? But if we were using this built-in and I could just have a built-in node options equals inspect, then I can guarantee that that makes it to node. This is really powerful. I'm hyped. There's a lot of potential here, even if it doesn't do the fancy nested stuff that I was excited for. Does anybody know what happens if I pass two env file arguments? Anybody who says I'm overcomplicating environment variables has never worked on a big project for more than a couple of days. This is the harsh reality of developing things that have integrations. You get used to it over the years. So we have this file that has two things in it. We'll do dot env have test equals hello. And then I'll say dot env dot dev test equals overridden test two equals hello. Now we can test a couple of different behaviors. I can also do test only one equals hello again. Console.log only one process. Cool. So this will test everything at once. So node env file equals dot env index.js. Cool. So that reads everything correctly. Here's where things get interesting. We passed two. And it only uses the one near the end. <sighs> that kind of sucks. It would have been nice if it collapsed all of these, because I know a lot of things, including .env, will use more than just the one .env file. It will also have like .env.server, .env.development, .env.production, and combine those and replace them depending on how you're running things. And it'd be really nice if we could have a default .env, and then anything you call after that gets overridden. So. As awesome as this is, it will not cover every use case. It only works on one file per runtime. Know that going in, this isn't going to be reliable for everything you want to use it for. But 
for the default majority use case, you can now have environment variables without having to deal with these things. Somebody said it might be commas. Now nothing works. So no, it is not commas. <laughs> So I guess you can pass all but one of the options for node through .env with the new env file binding. It would actually be really cool if you could trigger different environment files from an environment file, but this seems very, very shallow. It is just for one file. We'll see where this goes in the future, but for now, we're, we're approaching a point where we don't need a package just to get environment variables from our files. So I just hope we get Node 20 support on Lambda within the next year or two, because it's the only reason I'm still using 18. If you want to learn more about environment variables and how to use them safely, Julius worked really hard on a package, and I have a video all about it here for the T3 environment recommendations. Thank you guys again. Appreciate y'all. Peace nerds.